Hey, hey everyone. Welcome back. Um, I want to thank you all for your comments and, um, and, and for also, I love when you mention where you're, uh, where you're watching from, where, you know, I love to know what state you're from in the U.S. or what country you're from. Um, I, I love to know that. And, uh, yeah. Okay, well, welcome back. Let's just jump in. We're, <laughs> we're getting through Leviticus, and we are now in Leviticus chapter 11, and I think we're starting at verse 39. So it's, yeah, like, all about being kosher. <laughs> Verse 39, if an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, anyone who touches its carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who eats some of its carcass must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up the carcass must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. Every creature that moves along the ground is to be regarded as unclean. It is not to be eaten. You are not to eat any creature that moves along the ground, whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or on many feet. It is unclean. Do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures. Do not make yourselves unclean by means of them or be made unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy, because I am holy. These are the regulations concerning animals, birds, every living thing that moves about in the water, and every creature that moves along the ground. You must distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. Okay, that's the end of Leviticus chapter 11. And like I've said before, in Genesis, you know, we read that um, everyone was a vegetarian. I mean, it was the vegetation they were eating and then death entered the equation and but then you know people started eating meat and here we have you know rules and regulations for what is clean and unclean and um, later in the New Testament we find that um, you know Jesus says it's not what goes in your mouth that makes you unclean, but what comes out of your heart. So he kind of turns everything around, or gets to the heart of it, rather. Gets to the heart of what it means to be truly clean. You know, and, and that comes through him. He's the one who who makes us clean, <laughs> quote-unquote, forever by virtue of his abiding life within us. Because he is clean, then we become clean. And then, you know, speaking spiritually, of course, you know, in terms of holiness and purity and, and stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's just go on to John 16, and hold on, I'm going to make a note so I know where I stopped. <laughs> okay, so we, we will begin next time Leviticus chapter 12, and now we're going to go to John chapter 16. I think we, yeah starting at, six, at, at um, verse 16. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while 
you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I'm going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that, that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you're speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe? Jesus replied. A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay, that's the end of chapter 16, John 16. So let me write down where we are so I remember we will read John 17 next. Um, okay, I'm going to read this little study note in my first NIV first century study Bible on the word figuratively uh, in the Greek is uh, peroimia. This term is relatively broad and can refer to various types of parabolic and allegorical speech. Jesus' words were at times relatively obscure and difficult to interpret. Uh, I'm laughing because I think that's true. I mean, he, I feel like Jesus was, um, is, uh, but, you know, in the scriptures, oftentimes he, I don't know, it, it feels kind of poetic the way he communicates <laughs> or a little um, esoteric or um, no, esoteric is the wrong word um, more poetic and kind of um, um, hidden sometimes so it's interesting that in this chapter he admits that and they're like, can you just speak plainly, please? And uh, he says, though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father. So it's interesting that he did choose to speak figuratively. And, uh, but you know what? I appreciate that kind of, that communication style 
because I've often been told that I, I talk in circles, so. <laughs> I like to think of it as epicyclical, meaning it's circular, but it's progressing and moving forward. <laughs> anyway. I, all that to say, I'm not too linear in my thinking. But, um, so I appreciate Jesus's figurative speech, although it does... You know, like the disciples were often like questioning, what what does he mean? But that's when, you know, you need the Holy Spirit to help you. Well, okay, let's keep this one a little bit shorter. And look how cute. Let's zoom in on um, Henry. 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 Let's see if I if I use the name of his favorite toy if I wake up. Bug? No, he's fast asleep. He's, I hear him snoring. Bug? No, he's out. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wake up. Anyway, let's um, pray. Of course, uh, I'm recording this on Sunday night, but you'll see this tomorrow. Uh, and I post it at 5 p.m. Central uh, Time. I'm sorry, no, not Central Time. 5 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> I'm in the, I'm in the East now. I keep forgetting. Um, that's U.S. Time. Anyway, yeah, let me know in the comments if you if you want to, you know, where you're from or where you're listening from, watching from. I love to know that. And let's pray. Well, Henry snores. Lord, thank you for your promises. Thank you for the promise of joy. And you say you give peace, <laughs> not as the world gives, but because the world just gives us trouble. Um, so it's not a circumstantial peace or a circumstantial joy, but it's like a peace from your spirit and a joy from your spirit. So I pray for those things for myself because I really need that uh, right now. And we pray for the world, Lord. This is Sunday night. I think it's October 15th, 2023. And uh, there's just war going on all over the place. Ukraine, Israel. Gaza. We know these things are mentioned in your word. I, I think I heard somewhere that Gaza is mentioned in the Bible many, many times. It's mentioned in the Hebrew scriptures many times, the people of Gaza. And then in the New Testament, it's mentioned once as, I forget who, one of the disciples is on the road that leads to Gaza and he comes across someone who's reading Isaiah but doesn't understand it and then he um, he shares the scriptures with this person and they become a believer but um, anyway Lord we just lift up the people of Israel we pray for the peace of Jerusalem like you call us to we pray for the peace of Israel. We know, uh, this is, as we read your word, we know the promises you've, you, you've given to the people of um, the descendants of Abraham, the descendants of Isaac, the promise of the land. This is all in your word. But we also know, Lord, that... Um, the promise of the Messiah is for all people, and that goes for um, the people, uh, you know, the Palestinians. And we we pray for safety for uh, civilians in in Israel. We pray for just please um, help the people in Gaza, the civilians, and just um, please make a way for them, Lord. Our heart 
breaks for everyone who's suffering. And we pray um, even for uh, our enemies, uh, Hamas believers, that they would uh, turn to you. Um, Jesus, show up, uh, whether it's through vision or visions or dreams or whatever, um, before it's too late, Lord, um, that they would turn to you the God of Israel and find salvation and love and light and truth in you and peace. And we know that you call us to pray for our enemies. You call us to love our neighbors and you always call us to forgive. And you do, um, you also offer the hand of salvation to, to, to all people. And there is judgment and, uh, but now, you know, we, we pray for grace and we know that you will judge evil one day. We know our battles, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and wickedness, uh, in high places that this, this is a spiritual battle of behind the scenes of evil but we know that you have overcome evil and will eventually snuff it out but we pray for people caught in the crossfire that you would save those who who you would save and we and I ask, I need joy. <laughs> That's what I'm praying for right now. So um, I just uh, pray for you, for joy. Even though the world is crazy, I still need joy. So I ask for that. And oh, I think can I stream? Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. I, I saw Henry's tail twitching. I guess he's dreaming. Maybe he's dreaming about bugs. Henry? Henny? No, he's not waking up. Okay. Bye.